thanks so much for doing this. I mean, just being in the show itself, uh, we've had some long nine show weeks. We did a reading with our book writer yesterday, so I appreciate the time that you're taking. Uh, it really means a lot. Sure. So one of the lines in the show that always uh, resonates with me every day, uh, you come on as uh, William Gillette, who's this uh, local actor in the Connecticut uh, River Valley who originated the role of Sherlock Holmes. And he said that uh, he became spectacularly synonymous uh, with that character. And it was actually uh, one of my last guests on this program, Eric Ulloa, the other day, who was calling out to Facebook land all the different actors who have become synonymous with the characters that they played. And you know, I think some people threw out Carol Channing as Dolly and, sure. you know, uh, Cole Wilkinson. And, you know, I think to many of your fans, it, you know, you, as an actor, have become one and the same with uh, Jekyll and Hyde. What's it been like to, to be a working actor who's always you know, keeping yourself busy with new projects to have that association with a character like that? Well, one of the, uh, one of the most interesting things that happened to me was when I first got the job, mm -hmm. my agent at the time said to me, this is going to be a blessing and a curse. Mm -hmm. She knew right yeah. then. And I'm like, okay, I have no <laughs> idea what she was what she was referring to. But as I've uh, as I've gone on in my career, I know exactly what she meant. It's been uh, a blessing in that it uh, it gave me a name recognition. Mm -hmm. It gave me a certain cachet. Uh, it allowed um, producers to take a risk on me because they knew that I would put butts in the seat. Right. Um, so I was given opportunities to branch out and do things that I, I that people wouldn't that I could do, but people wouldn't have normally expect me to be able to do, like mm -hmm. straight plays, Shakespeare, uh, and you've yeah. directed uh, Shakespeare. Uh, yeah, but that's another thing. Also, yeah. it it also branched out my career in directing because uh, when Jack Van Dyke became available for the regional theater. Uh, I was one of the people that they called to direct it because they said, well, no one knows it better than you. Right. So that started me directing, and then from directing Jack One Hyde, people said, oh, he's directing and he did a good job with that. Let's give him a play. Mm -hmm. Let's give him a Shakespeare. Let's, so I've, I've been able to branch out with that. So that's all been a blessing, and that's mm -hmm. all been great for me. The flip side to that is that for some people, that's all they know me as, mm -hmm. and they as much as I've done countless things and, and really broadened my horizons as far as what I've done as, a, as an actor, um, people, many people haven't seen that. Right. A lot of it's been in the regions. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, uh, and even off Broadway. So people always go back to the Jekyll and Hyde, and sometimes they even equate every single thing that I do with Jekyll and Hyde. I, I saw that in some of the uh, reviews even for this thing. Oh, yeah. I haven't read those. Oh, but, well, but, <laughs> that was another question. Do, do you read your reviews? Uh, I don't anymore. I mm -hmm. read them after. Okay. I read them after a show because, uh, you know, no matter how good or bad they are, mm -hmm. they affect me. Okay. So I just wait until after and then I'll read them and, and say, oh, that's nice or, oh, where'd they get that from? So, yeah, so it's been, it's been uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're talking about the work that you do in regional theater, and obviously we're here at the regional theater that you've been at, I think this is your third time, is that right? Yeah. Um, but Paper Mill is probably one of the most that you've, yeah. you know, your prolific uh, work, including you know, Funny Girl in 1776, and uh, uh, Sound of Music, some really great pieces. Do you want to talk about what it's been like to have a home there? Uh, I have a couple of homes. Okay. Um, that's, that's one of them. That's a mm -hmm. very special place to me. They took me in uh, very early on in my career, back in the 80s, mm -hmm. I started working with them, and I've done, uh, gosh, I can't even count the, the amount of, of uh, shows I've done there. And I've met uh, great friends, I was able to grow as an actor and uh, do some really great work, and so Paper Mill is one of those places for me. Mm -hmm. uh, the Westchester Broadway Theater. Sure, you've done uh, the other Phantom. Yeah. If there is another Phantom. The uh, or yes, the Phantom. And have you directed there as well? Or? I have. I okay. directed a Jekyll and Hyde there. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera is another home for me. Mm -hmm. um, and the Shakespeare Theater in New Jersey. So these are places that I, I'm I 
have worked in a lot. Uh, I consider the people that run them as family, mm -hmm. and uh, even the stable of actors that that go in and out of there. I've known for many years, so it's it's just a comfortable place to work. It's great to go back to it. Now you started famously outside of theater. You were uh, you went to you grew up in uh, Long Island. Island in Long Island. Uh, went to school in New York uh, and were into finance. Is that right? Yeah. So what uh, what drew you to performing? Was performing always something that you did, just not professionally? Yeah, yeah it was always something I did. Uh, though I never I never thought of it as a career. Mm -hmm. uh, I never even thought it was a career. I I did uh, you know glee club in elementary school and uh, then I started doing community theater. I was in a Catholic high school where you know we had a girls' high school and a boys' high school mm -hmm. separated by an electrified fence. Oh my gosh! And it wasn't electrified. Okay. <laughs> I mean, at least that it was. Uh, the uh, the girls' high school was doing a play, uh, doing a musical. They were doing Oliver actually. Okay. My freshman year of, of high school. And uh, a buddy of mine said, hey, they need, you know, warm, breathing male bodies. You want to go <laughs> over? So I'm like, sure. So I went in, and I don't even know if I had to audition for it or not. But right. I said, sure, come on in. So mm -hmm. uh, that was, uh, uh, got me started in high school. Then my friend and I got our history teacher, uh, uh, Jim Giottino, to uh, become our... Uh, to start a drama club in the boys' high school. Mm -hmm. So I started doing musicals and plays there. And then I continued, I was in a rock band uh, in high school, and, and then I continued with, it, with college. So it was always part of my life, but I never really, I never really did anything with it other mm -hmm. than for fun. Then in senior year of college, I'm at St. John's University, I'm studying for finance, mm -hmm. planning to be a corporate lawyer. And uh, I was doing Godspell, and people said, you're good. Did you ever think of doing this as a career? And that's when the light bulb went off. And I said, you know, I love this, and if I don't try it, I'm going to say, what if, all my life? I didn't want to live with that. So I, I already bought the sheepskin, so I figured I might as well use it. And I got a job on Wall Street with a firm called E.F. Hutton. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I was there, I'd go uptown on my lunch hours. I'd slide my picture and resume under doors. I'd do auditions, things like that. Yeah. And I got a job at the Light Opera of Manhattan, uh, which was a repertory company in Manhattan that did uh, Gilbert and Sullivan operettas. Mm -hmm. uh, they worked 52 weeks out of the year. He did a new show every two weeks. But I did that at the same time that I was working at, at E.F. Hutton. So I'd work during the day down on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. I'd go up at night to, to do a show, and then I'd go back to Long Island at night and do the whole thing again. Uh, so that's how it started. Then I, I quit after about a year and a half. I quit E.F. Hutton, and I never looked back. And uh, when in the timeline was that in relation to, say, Chaffaire? Because uh, that was what he About 12 years. It took me 12 years to get okay. to Broadway, uh, which is relatively quick. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I. Most of my colleagues would be happy to get there at all. In the green room the other day, you were recalling how, you know, Cuccioli, you're a very Italian man, you went to a Catholic high school, and yet, you know, you've played a uh, Frenchman in uh, South Pacific and Jacques Brel and uh, Les Mis. You played many Jews. I've played more Jews than Italian. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this line of question. I don't know. I don't know. They just haven't come along. I mean, I've played a couple of Italians. I've played Tito in, in uh, Lemme a Tenor. And uh, Have you ever done uh, nine? Uh, and I did nine. Yeah, okay. Yes, I did Guido and nine. Yes. Which are you know iconic Italian roles. Absolutely. One uh, of your uh, more recent Broadway turns was in Spider-Man: Turn Off the Dark, which uh, had lots of uh, publicity leading up to its opening. But yeah. you, as a replacement actor, was it more or less settled by that point? No. Uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was always hanging over, I and mean, people knew that I was doing a role, and I would always ask, you know, <laughs> what, what trauma happened now, and I'm like, nothing really. I, but one major incident happened when I was there. It was mm -hmm. very, uh, it was kind of horrifying. But uh, for the most part, it was a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I just loved, I had so much fun doing that role. Uh, I really enjoyed the cast, the crew, everybody was really, it was so much fun to work with. Are you a comic book guy at all, or not really? Comic books, no, but I'm a, uh, I'm a sci-fi geek, mm -hmm. and I'm a, a, a superhero fan. Okay. So, you know, combine those two together, and I was, like, perfect for playing Green Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of your more iconic roles are based on 
big pieces of literature. Uh, mm -hmm. When you do your preparation for a role like that, uh, how much of it is the study of just of the, the script that you're given, and how much uh, do you lean into the source material? It's both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of course, the, the Bible is the script yeah. you're given. But um, if you go back and you read the source material, whether it's, you know, uh, Les Miserables, which is that thick, mm -hmm. or uh, <coughs> uh, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which mm -hmm. is only that thick, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's little things you can glean from that that you can, uh, you can sometimes use. There was one thing in Les Mis where I read that uh, in, the, in the novel, the only way you knew that Javert was unraveling or rattled mm -hmm. was he had one button unbuttoned. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and so I, I did that. Mm -hmm. uh, and after like a performance or two, the stage management said to me, uh, your button's unbuttoned. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. it's a choice. And, and they said, you can't do that. So I showed them if it was in the novel, mm -hmm. you know, if it was, if it was in the, their Bible, yes. then it was, and I, I proved it and they said, oh, Okay. So, okay. So they, so they okay, said, so all right. right. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> no, and that kind of leads me into my next question. Uh, it's it's been fun doing uh, this Christmas Carol two years in a row with uh, you know two really fine actors and veterans uh, because of the different choices that you make, and uh, there have been a couple uh, really wonderful moments. The uh, the thing you do in the prologue with Sam and the the bit with the dollar, you know, that are very much off the page, off the script, you know. You would call them bits or whatever. Um, do you look for these uh, opportunities when you're playing a role, or do they just kind of happen on an instinct and you follow it? Most of them come out of out of an instinct, mm -hmm. and then I just follow it. I love the other day uh, there was an empty seat in the front row, and you're like, I'm just gonna sit down for this moment. <laughs> it gave me a chuckle in the pit. Oh, good, so. good. Uh, yeah, I just I, I try to stay spontaneous. Mm -hmm. I always try to stay spontaneous with mm -hmm. pretty much everything I do, but some are more free. Yeah. Some characters are more free than others, uh, which allow me more of that leeway. I remember when we were doing Cutman in 2011, there was this stupid three-line word, I brought coffee. And every single day you did it differently. And it was the, it was the big <laughs> joke in the pit like to wait for this, whether it was going to be, I brought coffee, or I brought coffee, or <laughs> something. And I don't even know if it's something, I mean, it must have been intentional because you did it differently, but... It made a difference for us. Oh, good, good. I try to have, I try to have fun. Mm -hmm. I, mean, the char I, want, I want the characters to have fun with yeah. themselves. You know, so. And you know, when you're doing a, a long-running show or even something that runs a month, you, know, it, uh, you have to keep it fresh and, and your performance is always good. Thanks. Well, I, try, I, I, I don't try to do things different for the sake of doing it different. Mm -hmm. um, if, I, if I'm doing a long run, say if I, I mean, I've done things for, for over two years, and yeah, you hit a wall mm -hmm. after a while, and it's like, all right, how can I make this fresh? And and you find one little bit, just one little tidbit that you change a, a, a an idea of, or or uh, the line hits you differently. That day, walking to work, you know, uh, something will strike me. I'm like, oh, and it changes your whole show. Mm -hmm. Just that one little moment. <clears throat> you had an album that came out in 2012 or yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, mostly standards, but a couple more contemporary things, a couple uh, mashups. What was your, um, what was it like to, to do that song selection? It was fantastic. Uh, I, I have been wanting to do an album for many, many years. That one came out in 2012, since I was way into my career, is a little absurd. But it took me, for, it took me forever, to really, figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, I didn't want to do a typical, uh, you know, do show tune uh, album or, or some sort of song book. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But the standards, the more I was listening to them, the more they stuck out to me and the more they really hit home for me. The lyrics especially. Mm -hmm. I worked hard on, on doing that style and, uh, and I was very proud of it. It was my first venture. But there's some things I would redo as, mm -hmm. as you know, any artist would, you know, always wants to redo something. But uh, for the most part, I'm very happy with it. And in terms of redoing things, you've played several roles twice. You've revisited several pieces a couple times. Yeah. Uh, we crossed paths briefly. I was doing the copyist work for that production of Rothschild and Sons. Yeah. What was that like? It was, that it was terrific. It's a, it's, that was a show that was since I did Nathan back in 1991 or something mm -hmm. like that. 
that that show always resonated with me, and it's the idea of uh, family, mm -hmm. I guess, which is very close to Italians as, as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, that could be why I'm just so attracted to uh, to Jewish characters mm -hmm. as well, because I'm I'm very connected to them. So when yeah. Sheldon Harnick and Sherman Yellen and um, <coughs> and Jeff Moss yes. and Arnold Middleman contacted me to to play the father, I was like, yeah. And they redid this. They totally yeah. redid it. It's a totally brand new piece. Streamlined, family oriented. It was, it was perfect for the York. Yeah, and and to play Meyer, oh. it was really very special. It's a great it's a great character. And to do that journey from from his youth when he was like thirty yeah. to when he's sixty. Is is just uh, it's fantastic, and we're still hoping that something's going to happen with it. We did it in London mm -hmm. this time last year. Oh, okay. Uh, off West End, mm -hmm. and uh, we're hoping for a West End production. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, anything uh, in the books for the spring that you'd like to share, or? Uh, I'm doing a uh, an off Broadway play called The White Devil, which is uh, Daniel Webster. I'm doing that with the Red Bull Company mm -hmm. at uh, the Lucille Hotel, and that'll be in uh, with our rehearsals mid February, so like March, April. Great. Well, this conversation was just so lovely. Uh, oh, thanks, Sam. I really appreciate <laughs> that you came on. Uh, if you like Bob Puccioli as much as I do, then give this video a like, follow his work, buy his album. Yes, and you can always check my website, robertcuccioli.com, to see what I'm doing. Great, and I'll link that below as well. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Dan. I've seen the look of a baby with a rattle. I've seen the look of a hero in a battle. I've seen the look of a heartsick turtle dove, but the look that leaves you real shook is the look of love.